I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! This is Snowman in the Morning, and it begins now. Are you kidding me? Holy smokes! You'll need booze! Yeah. Excuse me, bitch! What the hell is that? Well, good morning! And welcome to the Wednesday edition of Snowman in the Morning on this early Wednesday morning. I'm back in studio. And we're, we're still getting some pieces together. Today's show brought to you in part by Cleaver Supplements. Pure supplements for when genetics are just not enough. And we are also on this day brought to you in part by ButcherBox. We're picking up a lot of online sponsors, but we always need more. And if you want to sponsor our show or any programming on Arena Sports Net, just go to arenasportsnet.com slash sponsor. Game three of the NBA Finals is tonight. Cravante Hurd will join me after the break to talk all things game three. Of the NBA World Championship Series. The Golden State Warriors lead two games to none. And don't you get the feeling. That. This is going to be. A lot. Different. Than what happened. Last year. Let me catch all up on a couple of things. I wasn't on yesterday. Didn't get a chance to. Be on yesterday. And it's totally my fault. I had some things to deal with. And I hadn't gotten any sleep. So, like I said, totally my fault. Had some things to deal with, dealt with them. Now ready to get back to work. But I spotted this story that I was going to talk about yesterday, but didn't get a chance to. What if your golfer, Michael, I want to get this right, Michael Butter Cavoli. And you're on your way to a very important qualifier that would get you or you're very you're on your way to the u.s open qualifying a u.s open qualifying event there i got it right this is courtesy of yahoo sports and i thought i would lead off with this story to break up the monotony of talking about the stanley cup finals which are tied to a piece and the golden state warriors and the nba finals up two games to none i thought i'd lead off with this story and anyone who has been through something like this knows what the situation is. Michael Buttercavoli lost his had had his golf clubs lost by American Airlines. He was trying to qualify for the US Open, but then he had to pull out because of an airline's mistake. American Airlines Lost his golf clubs. Butter Cavoli was flying to play at the Jupiter Hills Golf Club in Tecesta, Florida. He got there. His clubs didn't. Reading the tweet from said golfer, who can be followed at mbutta, M-B-U-T-T-A, 326. Tweet reads, Thank you at American Air. One golf bag with priority tags on plane and the only bag you can't find. Unfortunately, have to WD, which means withdraw, from at U.S. Open Golf sectionals. American Airlines responded by saying in their tweet, We want to reunite you as quickly as possible. Please verify your bag tag number via DM. Michael responds via Twitter. Already filed a missing bag report. It's too late. I already withdrew. You just needed to do your job in the first place. Couple of strange tweets followed after that. Again, this story is courtesy of Yahoo Sports. uh, sports Sports.yahoo.com This wasn't the experience. This is American Airlines tweeting at American Air. This wasn't the experience we had planned for you. Our sincerest apologies. Michael responds, priority tags are meaningless. Told you 100 times, stop apologizing. Don't need sympathy or you to be PC. Just do better. You have yet to show that. Mm. Now, here's where it becomes more fun because Zach Blair 
offered up a very good question. Zach Blair, who can be followed at Z underscore Blair, B-L-A-I-R, says, at Nick Geyer, I've done it a couple times in my amateur days, at Jones Cup, and, and at Pacific Coast Am, played okay too. You never know, sometimes you just find a good set. Zach Blair posed the question, why don't you just snag some rental uh, rental uh, clubs? Well, you kind of figured you wouldn't need rental clubs after this kind of situation. Strange, isn't it? I just had to lead off with that story to break up the monotony of everything else that's being talked about. And we're going to get some more content here on the show and get everything covered. My wonderful producer, Cervante Hurd, is standing by. We're going to make this an express edition because we're still working on the website, still getting it together. I know I had planned to launch for this past Monday. Couldn't do it. Ran into a few difficulties. But hang in there with us, folks. We're putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. And... um, Just hang in there with us. Just hang in there with us. Gravante Hurd will join me after the break. Today's show, as mentioned, is brought to you in part by the one and only Cleaver Supplements. And thank you to Cleaver Supplements for being a year-long sponsor of not only this show, but of all of our content on Arena Sports Net this coming season. As Snowman in the Morning is fueled by Cleaver Supplements. Hey folks, summer's approaching and it's time to get your body kick-started. With that in mind, reach for the supplements that will do just that. Cleaver Supplements. Providing natural supplements to help you lose weight, get stronger, and have greater workouts. All to propel you towards your summer body and mind goals. Visit CleaverSupplements.com today and get on the best track to a healthier you. Cleaver Supplements. Pure supplements for when genetics are just not enough. Gravante heard after the break. This is Snowman of the Morning, the Express Edition, presented by Cleaver Supplements. Back in a deuce. Programming on Arena Sports Net is fueled by Cleaver Supplements. Hey, folks, summer is approaching and it's time to get your body kick started. With that in mind, reach for the supplements that will do just that Cleaver Supplements. They provide natural supplements to help you lose weight, get stronger, and have greater workouts, all to propel you towards your summer body and mind goals. Visit CleaverSupplements.com today and get on the best track to a healthier you. Cleaver Supplements, pure supplements for when genetics are just not enough. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Who do I perform for? I perform for all the awesome composers whose music deserves to be heard. I perform for all the stagehands who make sure I never miss a cue. I perform for our high school choir director who taught me to breathe from the diaphragm and sing from the heart. Speech, debate, theater, music. The performing arts teach valuable life lessons that typically aren't taught in the classroom. They help high school students learn leadership skills that prepare them to enjoy more satisfying, productive lives. I perform for Mrs. Evans, my high school debate coach, who has helped me become more confident than I ever dreamed possible. This message presented by the Illinois High School Association and the high school in your community. Hey, I've got a question for you. Who will you perform for? This is Snowman in the Morning. Are you kidding me? That's us. I say meet the ball. The Wednesday edition of Snowman in the Morning continues. Game three of the NBA Finals is tonight. It's a 9 p.m. Eastern time start from Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. Golden State is up two games to none. I handed at it during parts of the show in the midst of talking about the Stanley Cup Finals and the Women's College World Series and other things. This 2-0 lead is so different than the 2-0 lead Golden State had last year. And to help me break this down and get us ready for Game 3, 
one of my fabulous producers and one of the hosts of the Flex Zone. His name is Gravante Hurd, and he joins me now via the Cleaver Supplements Hotline. Good morning. What is going on, Beast? No, how's everything? Everything's doing good, my friend. Why does Sounds this duo lead good. seem different than the two old lead that Golden State had last year? Well, <laughs> the two old lead is different because uh, it's a guy by the name of Kevin Durant. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean that's the obvious. It has to be the obvious. I mean, looking back last year, all right, they were down two old at this point, and game two they did get beat by like thirty last year. Mm-hmm. So I can see why they still have some kind of hope. But Kevin Durant is soon going to quickly close the door on all their hopes because, I mean, we already knew the type of offense, the offensive player he was. He's the best offensive player in the league as an all-round offensive player from scoring to, I mean, dribbling off the dribble. And he's even dunking off a whole lot more than we. Oh, yeah. Starting that next. But. What he's showing on the defensive side of the ball, I haven't seen anybody of his caliber. Like, you know, we, we we still don't even know what height he is. They're saying 6'9", they're saying 6'11", they're saying 7, seven feet. But he's, him playing defense is putting him so far ahead of where he was in 2012 oh, when yeah. he played LeBron first time. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's the huge difference. Like, and you guys can't act like you don't see that. Like, I don't understand This is so different than the way Durant was playing in 2012 in the finals, like you said. And what's even scary, it's made Golden State that much more of a defensive team than an offensive team. Right, right. And um, the Warriors were already a pretty good defensive team before, you know, they Kevin Durant came. And Kevin Durant's adding since he's tall, Seven six wingspan, like he's blocking shots. He's getting three three steals a game. Like it's crazy what he's able to do on offense. Not not just the offense side. It's the defense. Like he's altering shots. He's playing the five when they go small. Like he's all over the place. And that's the scariest thing. And Cleveland has not seen this kind of defensive presence in their runs in the playoffs. But. Here's one of the players that you had talked about and I had spoken about that could be an X factor and turning out is an X factor that appeared in game two. Does the name Clay Thompson mean anything to you? Listen, man, offensively, you know what? I can't even say we've been sending that we we could send it we should send an APB out because we didn't need him. He was playing so well on the defensive side of the ball. It's like, all right, he'll make his money there and KD and Steph will take over for the offense until you decide you want to wake up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so and, it, and, and, and we've it's been not even him it. deciding that he wanted to wake up. It's him saying, okay, my shot's not falling. Let me contribute another way defensively. And you can put that on the influence of Mike Brown being on the coaching staff. Sure enough. Sure enough. And Clay, and Clay Thompson's always been a really good perimeter defender. Like, He's one of maybe three players in the league that can really that can really show up on offense and defense. They call them two way players. Mm-hmm. It ain't but him and maybe a couple of us. Uh, Kawhi Leonard comes up, Jimmy Butler comes up, and of course, um, shoot, now you could take Kevin Durant, I guess. Yeah. So, but it's but I'm just saying it to say that there's not that many people like Clay Thompson where if his shot. Is not falling on his offensive game is not where it you know said where we're used to saying it he can make up for it on the defensive side of the ball because he's making Kyrie life extra extra hard. Oh yeah, he is, and like, he's, he's he's making like, the entire Cleveland team's life extra extra hard defensively because as you said, Kevin Durant's everywhere. Clay Thompson's been everywhere. Right, 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 and you know the Cavs when you put the Cavs in a in a vacuum, I guess. Who? How many people on that team can really create? You know what I'm saying? When the offense is not working, when all else fails, who can really create? It ain't but two players, honestly. Right. And Clay Thompson's on one of them. So that kind of cuts it in 50%. I mean, he's not going to completely shut down Kyrie. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Kyrie is a, is a 
one of the best scorers in the league. He's going to get his one way or another. But you can contain him yeah. and not have him have those 30-point games. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he needs to do. And that's what he's been doing throughout, not even just the finals. I mean, throughout the playoffs, the regular season, it, he's been there. Here's a point that I made on Monday, and I also made part of it this morning. In the in the 2016 finals, the Warriors only had one first half in all seven games where they had 60 points. They've got two of them coming into tonight. That offense is clicking. Crazy, 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 crazy. And we knew that was going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. there's too many weapons on that team for them not. You almost, you almost got to book them for 55 to 60 points in a, in a half because, I mean, outside of having a horrible shooting night, that's going to happen because it, it's too much to defend. I mean, if Tyron Lue had hair, he'd be pulling it out. Right? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's too much. So, 60, that's why That's why they average 120. They, you know, they almost, I think it was 118 to be exact, but that's why they average about 118 to 120 a game because they drop a 60 by halftime. I wouldn't be surprised in either tonight's game or Friday's game if the Warriors dropped a 70-point half. The last two years, the Warriors have had the most 70-point halves in the league. They've yet to drop one in the playoffs. They're due hmm. to drop one real soon. They're due to drop a 70-point half real soon. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of these next two here in Cleveland. And I wouldn't be surprised either because they have the potential to do so. I mean, and honestly, the only reason why they have it is because in both these games, well, i say mainly in game two, KD and Steph, didn't have their explosive. They didn't have explosive starts. Right. You know, it, it, it built up. They had it started slow. They missed a layup. They missed a lot of easy, easy shots to turn the ball over, and they didn't get started like they usually do. And then second, in second quarter, it picked up a little bit. And then the second half, they just blow the doors off. That's why they haven't had those seventy points first half because it takes them a little bit, at least half the first quarter, to get themselves going. You can expect them to have more than an 11-point quarter that they had in Game 6 last year. And we already talked about how different this team, this Golden State team is than the team that they had last year. Remember, last year they won 73 games. But the 132 points that they put up, the most in the finals since 87, when the Lakers did it to Boston and they scored 100. 41. Let's look on the Cleveland side of the ball. Everything we know goes through LeBron, but why has Cleveland yet to solve that savage Golden State defense? Man, I think, (laughs) you know what? And now I understand, even though you can't give him credit for this, LeBron's been crying for help all year, and I see it now. I think this is what LeBron was talking about. And when and him, him always, you know, saying, I need more of this, I need more of that, because right. he knew coming at this point, he knew he was going to face either the Spurs or this team, and he was going to have problems. And the problem is, offensively, it, they're lacking. They're lacking. Like I was saying earlier, when all else fails, they only have two people that can create. That's him and Kyrie. And I've been saying Kyrie do too much one-on-one. Is entirely too much one on one, and when they get like that, that's when the Warriors like to run, and that's when they you let the Warriors set up in half court, you're in trouble. Because that means KD is probably not going to say he's still on the court, and who is KD really guarding one on one? Right. And not really, not really anybody. He can play center field like LeBron was doing last year, mm-hmm. and get his hands in the passing lane, and it's like they're really long. That's why like KD's at his length. This going to stay defense out, and Clay is already what six seven six eight. Yep, he has a pretty long, he's pretty long himself. You know what I'm saying? Then they got Zaza out there. Like it's too much length to overcome, and I really don't see Cleveland running too many plays. You know what I'm saying? If anything, their best bet is to get catch them on, on the fast break, like run with them. But you don't want to do that because you give the Warriors extra possessions, and if they shoot fifty percent, then they'll put up 120 in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's really hard. Like a- another thing, Tyron Lue pulled out pulled out his head about this because I don't even know what he's really calling. Like who's the coach? Is LeBron calling these plays or is Tyron Lue calling these plays? Right. Or are they calling plays at all? You know what I'm saying? Like I it's it, they're, they're lacking. Like and Jared Smith is just a waste of space. Honestly, I'm not even going to phase you on that. He's just. <laughs> He's out there taking up space. I'm like, what is he doing? What are you out there for? Because you're not a top-notch defender. And, you know, you're probably the strictest shooter I've ever seen. Like, when you cold, you are really cold. Like, you ice cold. And John, he pa- had John Paxson back in the day wasn't this streaky. At least John Paxson was consistent as a shooter. Right. And JR had three points in a combined two games. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, when you got players like that on the court, it hurts yeah. because they're not contributing. You know what I'm saying? And Tristan Thompson, he's never been an offensive guy. So you got guys that have a lot of ability on offense. You don't have two-way players like the Warriors do. Tristan Thompson has been absolutely invisible in the playoffs. Yeah, he's pulling a LaMarcus Aldridge. Yeah, he is. Where's Tristan Thompson? Send out an APB for Tristan Thompson because <laughs> – they expected, Cleveland expected to bully Golden State on the boards. Not the case. Golden State's out rebounding Cleveland 2-1. to one. Not to mention, Golden State's beating them up in the paint. And you would think, with Golden State having uh, a little bit of a smaller team, save Kevin Durant and Zaza Pachulia, that they would struggle against Cleveland's bigs. Not the case. Not at all. That I, I, I saw... I forgot what the stat was, but it was crazy. But it was alluded to the point, like, they had, they're killing them in the paint. Yep. Now, the Warriors team, as good as the three-point shooting team there is, you would never think that this team would dominate anybody in the paint. And it just goes to show you that they, how how well they blew out, you know, Santa Cavaliers, because if you beat them in the paint, you for sure going to beat them on perimeter, too. Exactly. You know, and it didn't help that the Cavaliers were turning the ball over, what, 20 times in the first game. So that's a recipe for disaster. And you would think with Cleveland forcing 15 first-half turnovers in Game 2, it would be a recipe for a comeback for Cleveland. But like you said, Golden State got started in that third period. They took a three-point halftime lead, and the next thing you know, it was 15 going into the money period. Right. And I've noticed um, over these past two games, the third quarter is the crucial quarter. That's when the Warriors pull away. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, the first half is cool, like, it looked like if, if watching game two, if you'd have saw, uh, seen the first half, you'd have thought, wow, this may, this may go down to the wire. No. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. That first, that second half started, and KD and Steph with Blit. No, I'm sorry. Clay Thompson. Clay went <laughs> off. <laughs> Clay Thompson. I mean, you know, Steph and KD did their usual thing, but then you add in Clay, that's like. Forgot he was here. <laughs> I think Cleveland forgot he was there because that third quarter belonged to Clay Thompson. And something that Clay Thompson said during a post game interview, when he was questioned about his slump, he said this, and I quote, I'm not worried about the slump. As long as we're winning, I know the shots will come back to me. That's frightening. Back. Back. Facts. And that's a shooter. That's a, that's a shooter. That's what shooters say. Shooters, we all, all the greats go through slumps at some point, but as a shooter, you know eventually it's going to come back. You're a shooter. That's what you do. Eventually it's going to come back. And when it comes back, it's going to be like, wow, we forgot this guy was here. <laughs> and that's what Cleveland, yeah, that's what happened. Because see, man, I'm, I mean, I talk about pulling out your head. I keep bringing this, bringing this up. What can you do? See this team for for Cleveland defensively. What can they do to stop, slow down, uh, contain this 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 death lineup? And honestly, shoot, as long as KD and then Steph on the court, it's going to be a death lineup. It doesn't matter who else you put on the court. It's exactly. going to be a death lineup. You know what I'm saying? And like, what can you do, LeBron? LeBron, if you want LeBron to be LeBron, to be the king, to be aggressive, and, and all this and that. You guys, he can't, he can't play KD. He can't play KD defensively because he's not going to have nothing left for the defense, for the offensive side of the ball. He, you know what he's going to work himself out. And that's, and that's what happened in the second half. The, the, um, LeBron James ran out of gas. 
Yeah, he did. He ran out of gas and, big time. And you you saw that. You can you can easily see that, and that's when KD looked like he had the freshest legs ever. And that's when and that I believe me and you were also talking about the injury impact that he had early and all the rest that he was getting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, they running through the West the way that they did. KD might be the freshest superstar out there. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know, once Stephen Curry gets going, it's going to be over. Then you add KD to the mix, and then Klay Thompson went off. What can you do against this war against this Warrior team? And here's the biggest factor, and we'll close with this. The biggest factor from last year to this year, Golden State is healthy. Yes, very true. Very true. Everybody, everybody's hundred percent Steph. Steph I, I, and then, you know, I knew something something didn't look right with Steph last year, and then the injury whole injury come comes out after they lose. And I, I, I don't like excuses, but you know, what I'm saying it, you could tell it was a factor in them. You know, what I'm saying losing those last three games. And but I, I do have one thing that Cleveland could do defensively. Pray. They have prayer. <laughs> so, That's so about all prayer. they got. <laughs> That's about all they got. <laughs> Game they three tonight. Game three tonight. The Cavaliers at the Cavaliers host the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors are trying to make it three zero. Cleveland will try to make it two one. And my prediction is it'll be three zero by the time this game ends tonight. For those of you watching, you can watch it on ABC. Listen to it on ESPN on the National Call. For those of you in the Bay Area, if you're on the move, Tim Roy and Tom Tolbert will bring you the call on the game 95.7, the flagship station of the Golden State Warriors, and the Cleveland Cavaliers flagship station, WTAM AM 1100, if you're on the go in Cleveland. Cravante Heard, one of the hosts at the Flex Zone, joining the snowman this morning. Tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. Uh, you can find me at Crevante Herd, that's C R E V O N T E H U R D E on Facebook and Twitter. And, and on Instagram, you can follow me, Crevante underscore Herd. That's Crevante Herd, one of the hosts of the Flex Zone, joining me this morning. All of our guests are, all of our guests appear via the Cleaver Supplements hotline. Pure supplements for when genetics are just not enough. Visit CleaverSupplements.com for more information. Thanks a lot, my friend. I really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Please, we got to do this again before the finals are over. Ooh. We will. We absolutely <laughs> will. A quick pause for a break, and I'll put a bow on this bad boy. Snowman in the morning, back in the deuce. Choose from four different types of boxes, all including our amazing grass-fed and grass-finished beef, and change your box anytime. Butcher Box is a monthly membership service, but you can adjust your frequency to receive a box each month or every other month. You can also cancel at any time. Beef up your box by selecting some of our tasty add-ons like Paleo Bacon Burgers and Ground Beef and have it delivered for free on your schedule for less than $6 a meal. Want to get started? Then visit arenasportsnet.com and click on the Butcher Box logo or call 855 981 85 Six, eight. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You're bringing your daughter to her favorite pop star's concert. Do you A, wear earplugs? Isn't this fun, Dad? I have a soft pretzel. B, remember the moment with matching concert t-shirts. That's going to be 180 bucks. Or we can just take a photo. C, show her how you used to do concerts. We're going crowd surfing. I can't. It's too heavy. Oh, my God. Oh. Or D, just roll with it. Woo, Justin, look at us, we're over here. Justin, Justin, OMG. He just looked, I love you, Justin. I love you. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org slash AL. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Snowman in the Morning. We thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow us, SIT Morning 2 on Instagram, SIT Morning on Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Also, follow Arena Sportsnet on all of our social media. Come back Thursday 
for a wrap-up of Game 3 of the NBA Finals, talk more Stanley Cup Finals, and some college and pro baseball will be a coming your way. And we'll give you a little high school baseball report as well. As Illinois and Indiana prepare for their state finals, we'll give you all the results of who is going where. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day. God bless. And remember to make your next move your best move. And always remember, if your dreams don't scare you, then they are not big enough. Dream big, do bigger. Follow us online at snowmaninthemorning.com and arenasportsnet.com. Till tomorrow, Snowman out.